Step eight, style. Riffs and runs, blues and pentatonic scales, and texture. How your voice works. The six elements of vocal style. Contemporary music includes a great deal of style crossover. Many country artists sound like pop singers. Pop artists need to be able to riff soulfully like R&B singers. And musical theater contains every element of style from classical or legit to gospel and even rock. Acquiring the musical elements of divergent styles of singing will enhance your students' style and make them more versatile. Some of these elements include timbre or tone color, embellishments, riffs and runs, melismas, phrasing, sustain, use of vibrato, intensity, and texture. Vocal timbre or tone color varies dramatically from one style to the next. The use of vocal colors, sometimes called resonance, can be a big factor in whether or not your student sounds authentic singing in a particular style. The resonant, pure, low larynx sound of classical singing, for example, although beautiful and impressive, is entirely inappropriate for pop or rock singing, which uses a much more conversational or speech-like quality. The vertical positioning of the larynx affects timbre. A low laryngeal position produces a darker vocal timbre. While we don't want to hike our larynx excessively, small adjustments in laryngeal height can make a huge difference in the authenticity of the tone. Intensity. Both opera and rock are intense styles, while folk singing is far less intense. Vibrato is constantly present in some styles like classical singing and can be non-existent in some styles like rock. Delayed vibrato is common in theater and jazz singing. Phrasing. A jazz singer will back phrase, using a conversational tone while a rock singer usually comes in right on the downbeat. Vocal embellishments or melismas vary between styles. Gospel and R&B use flamboyant and challenging riffs while folk singing is simple. Make sure your choice of riffs and runs is appropriate for the style of music that you're singing. How would you know that? By listening to and imitating many different artists that represent each different style. Diction and dialect also contribute to making the sound more authentic. For example, country singing is filled with dropped final consonants, such as G. In country music, you would say singin' rather than singing. Many country singers also emphasize the more closed secondary vowels of a diphthong. Hwai o hwai rather than hwai o hwai. The retroflexive R is also emphasized in country singing. A country singer would sing, my heart while well, an opera singer would delay that retroflexive R as long as possible. Becoming a total performer. Artistry. Having a great voice with perfect vocal technique is terrific, but most audiences don't pay to hear perfect vocal technique. They come to a performance or they buy a song because they want to feel something. They want to be moved. The ability to move an audience is what distinguishes an artist from someone with a great voice who, though they may sing technically well, is not yet an artist. Artistry is the ability to always be absolutely in the moment, believing every word you're singing with absolute control of a voice that responds readily to every emotion. Emotion. Students need to learn to connect to the text and personalize the song. Writing prep, answering the who, what, when, where, and why of the lyric is also very helpful. Acting skills such as knowing your objective and adding subtext also contribute to the total performance. Working with a choreographer on stage movement is essential. Use tools like video to your advantage. Video record yourself and evaluate your rehearsals. Teaching the step. Objectives. The student will learn the basic riffs and runs found in much of today's contemporary music. Two. The student will learn the blues and pentatonic scales and the riffs associated with those scales. Three, the student will learn to use texture choices such as breathiness, dynamics, timbre, vibrato, intensity, distortion, phrasing and pitch variations, rhythmic and tempo variations. Four, the student will learn to become an acting artist with various acting exercises. Five, the student will learn basic stage choreography and movement. We begin with the basic riffs and runs exercises. The student will learn a song, O Holy Night, applying these basic riffs and runs to the song. This is followed by the pentatonic and blues exercises, and finally, the texture exercises. Riffs and runs. In step eight, we learn some really fun stuff like riffs and runs. Everybody wants to be able to riff well, but many people think they can't riff if they didn't grow up surrounded by gospel music. Never fear. Riffing like any other musical skill can be learned and taught. Just like we learn to speak as babies by imitation, 
we can learn the language of riffs by memorizing and practicing some of the more common riffs. After a while, you realize that most of the riffs you hear are similar patterns of notes, a language of specific notes and musical phrases. Riffs and runs are a huge component of R&B, gospel, and pop music. Let's face it, it's very impressive to most of us to hear someone who riffs well, who chooses just the right notes and executes them with perfect intonation, flexibility, and speed. Intonation is singing in tune, neither flat, under the pitch, nor sharp, above the pitch. To improve your flexibility and speed skills, we often start exercises slower and then increase the tempo. It's a good idea to break your song or even your riffs and runs up into chunks and work on small sections at a time, perfecting those small sections instead of singing the whole song or run over and over. Remember, practice doesn't make perfect, it makes permanent. So don't, so don't practice wrong. Teaching the step, pentatonic and blues scales. Many riffs, runs, and licks in contemporary singing come from the blues and pentatonic scales. When your student learns to sing these scales and the exercises that go with them, they will begin to be able to come up with their own riffs and runs rather than simply copying another singer. A copier is not an artist. An artist has the musical vocabulary and skills to come up with something new, fresh, and original. Learning the blues scales and the pentatonic scales in all inversions will give you the musical vocabulary to come up with your own riffs and runs. Pentatonic scales. The word pentatonic comes from the Greek words pente, meaning five, and tonic, tone. The pentatonic scale consists of five notes within one octave. The pentatonic scale can be played and sung in any inversion. That means you can start on any of the notes in the major or minor pentatonic scale. The two basic forms of the pentatonic scale are the major pentatonic and the minor pentatonic. Many R&B riffs come from the minor version of the pentatonic scale. The blues scale is similar to the minor pentatonic with only one added note, the sharp four or flat five. The blues originated with African Americans. Blues singing requires a great deal of feeling and emotion. It is deeply heartfelt. Blues is the music of the human condition. Teaching the step. Texture. Texture is many things. It can be a tone quality that embodies and represents a particular emotion. It can be phrasing a certain way. It can be an improvisational riff that sounds like a bird combined with a lyric about a bird. In Renaissance music, they call this word painting. The singer is painting the text with the voice. Singers are word painters. They make lyrics come to life by the way they sing them. Think of the voice as a musical instrument that has many different possibilities for shading and sound choices. The vocal tone, subtext, timbre, volume, dynamics, and phrasing chosen should reflect the meaning and emotion assigned to the lyric. Adding texture to singing creates greater expression of emotion. This is where words and notes written on a page become the emotional expression known as music. Subtext. Texture must be chosen for a specific reason, to reflect a particular emotion in the song. To make these choices, a singer needs to know what that emotion is. Going through lyrics and notating emotional subtext choices for each phrase of a song will be very valuable here. Subtext is the intended meaning behind a spoken or sung phrase. The same phrase can have many different meanings depending on the subtext given. In other words, the same phrase can be interpreted many different ways depending on the intention of the speaker or singer. It's up to the singing artist to make interpretational choices that will best reflect the subtext they have chosen. Stage movement. Make sure there is an understanding of the emotional subtext of the song before movement is added. Gestures should be natural and should relate to the text. First, have the student speak the words of the song to you as if you're having a conversation. Then add some natural gestures that they would normally make in a conversation. The challenge with gestures in singing is that we sustain notes when singing and we don't in speech. Make gestures short and natural, just like those you would use when talking animatedly. Use the concept of the fourth wall, the imaginary wall between the artist and the audience. The fourth wall is where they should place a mental image of the person they are singing to in the song. Songs are usually sung to someone, real or imagined. The person should be someone in their life who causes them to feel the emotions of the song. As they are singing, they are having an imaginary conversation with that person. Advise the student, don't worry about the audience, just sing your heart out to this person on your fourth wall. The audience will be able to see what is going on in your eyes and they will be pulled into the story if your eyes are open and slightly lifted. Have them focus their eyes slightly upward, just above the heads of the audience members in the last row. Exercises. Step 8. 
style. Now it's time for some really fun stuff, riffs and runs. Everybody wants to be able to riff well, but many people think they can't riff if they didn't grow up surrounded by gospel music. Never fear, riffing like any other musical skill can be learned and taught. Just like we learn to speak as babies by imitation, we can learn the language of riffs by memorizing and practicing some of the more common riffs. After a while, you realize that most of the riffs you hear are similar patterns of notes, a language, if you will, of specific notes and musical phrases. In this step, you're going to learn the musical language of riffs and runs, and learn to sing more emotionally by creating texture. You'll learn the basic riffs common to today's contemporary music. You will also learn the blues and pentatonic scales and riffs associated with those scales. You'll learn to use texture choices such as breathiness, dynamics, vibrato, distortion like graspiness, creaks, growls, and screams, and phrasing and pitch variations along with rhythmic and tempo variations. You will then apply your new skills to a song, Oh Holy Night. Riffs and Runs Riffs and runs are a huge component of R&B, gospel, and pop music. Let's face it, it's very impressive to most of us to hear someone who riffs well, who chooses just the right notes and then executes them with perfect intonation, flexibility, and speed. Let's talk about those three factors. Intonation means singing in tune. It doesn't matter how fast you can riff if your riffs are out of tune. Being flat or under the pitch or sharp above the pitch, even just a little bit, is the surest way to evoke a cringe reaction in your listener. The best way to make intonation precise is to learn and practice riffs and runs slowly, then gradually increase the speed, paying attention to intonation. Flexibility. Flexibility is a key component of riffing. Flexibility requires a lighter coordination of the vocal folds and less air pressure. Singing hard all the time makes it much more difficult to develop the lightness and flexibility needed to execute fast runs. Backing off on volume and air pressure makes riffing easier. The dynamics and flexibility exercises in Step 7 are designed to prepare you for riffing in Step 8. Speed. Not all improvisation is fast, but dazzling bursts of high-speed runs are a large component of singing today. However, riffing is not just about speed. It's speed combined with precision. A lighter approach will help. It's harder to make a big and dramatic voice move quickly. If the run is long, break it down into chunks or segments and practice each segment slowly over and over. It's much more efficient to take small two to four measure sections and work them separately rather than singing the whole section or song over and over. Finally, put all the sections together and practice the whole thing slowly. Then gradually increase the tempo. A great tool for this kind of practice is a software program called the Amazing Slow Downer. Very inexpensive, but it's a great way to slow down a track and then gradually speed it up again. Riffs are smaller sections of music, usually a measure or less. Runs are riffs that are combined together. Think of riffs as musical words that can be combined in various ways to communicate longer phrases. Those are known as the runs. Basic Riffs and Runs Yeah, 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 yeah Yeah, 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 yeah yeah, 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 yeah.
From now on, it's you and me. Whoa, whoa. Pentatonic Riffs and Runs Pentatonic and Blues Scales, where Riffs and Runs began. All riffs, runs, and licks in contemporary singing come from the blues and pentatonic scales. When you learn to sing these scales and the exercises that go along with them, you can begin to come up with your own riffs and runs, rather than simply copying another singer. A copier is not an artist. An artist has the musical vocabulary and skills to come up with something new, fresh, and original. Learning the blues scales and pentatonic scales in all the inversions will give you the musical vocabulary to come up with your own riffs and runs. The word pentatonic comes from the Greek word pente, five, and tonic, which means tone. The pentatonic scale consists of five notes within one octave. It can be played and sung in any inversion. That means you can start on any of the notes in the scale. The two basic forms of the pentatonic scale are the major and the minor. The major pentatonic is one, two, three, five, and six from the major scale. That would be in the key of C, C, D, E, G, and A. The minor pentatonic is one, 
flat 3, 4, 5, and flat 7 from the major scale. That would be C, E flat, F, G, and B flat. Many R&B riffs come from this version of the scale. The blues scale is similar to the minor pentatonic scale, but with one added note, the sharp 4 or flat 5. The notes of the blues scale are 1, flat 3, 4, sharp 4, 5, flat 7. The flat 3, sharp 4, otherwise known as flat 5, and flat 7 are the blue notes. Now is the time to incorporate the dynamics and vibrato skills you've been learning in step 7. When singing riffs and runs, you can add vibrato on sustained pitches. Try to vary dynamics. Don't sing everything at the same volume level. Please remember that pitch accuracy is important. Start slowly and gradually build up speed. One, two, three, five, six, five, three, two, one. Da 
Riffs and Runs.
music showing. Texture. Texture. Once you can sing a riff or a run precisely, it's time to add some texture. Texture is many things. It can be a tone quality that embodies and represents a particular emotion. It can be phrasing a certain way. It can be an improvisational riff that sounds like a bird combined with a lyric about birds. In Renaissance music, they call this word painting. The singer is painting the text with the voice. Singers are word painters. They make the lyrics come to life by the way they sing them. Think of your voice as a musical instrument that has many different possibilities for shading and sound choices. The vocal tone, subtext, timbre, volume, dynamics, and phrasing chosen should reflect the meaning and emotion assigned to the lyric. Adding texture to singing creates greater expression of emotion. This is where words and notes written on the page become the emotional expression known as music. Texture choices. The texture choices we will be working on include breathiness, dynamics, vibrato, distortions such as raspiness, creaks and growls and screams, and variations such as phrasing, melodic, and rhythmic variations.
to review, complete the Test Your Knowledge section after reading Step 8 in the manual. Oh,